This video gives an application of integration to calculating center of mass. As a warm-up problem, let's suppose there are four children, Abe, Beatrice, Caledonia, and Drew, and they're all sitting on a seesaw. The children are at a distance from the left end of the seesaw of one meter, three meters, five meters, and seven meters, respectively. And they have masses of 25 kilograms, 30 kilograms, 10 kilograms, and 35 kilograms. We're supposed to figure out where to put the fulcrum of the seesaw in order to make the seesaw balance perfectly, ignoring the mass of the seesaw itself. I'll call the position of the fulcrum x bar. So x bar represents the number of meters of the fulcrum from the left end of the seesaw. And I've drawn it here in between child B and child C, although it could conceivably end up being in some other interval of the seesaw. Now each child is causing a rotational force on the seesaw. The children on the left side of the fulcrum are making the seesaw want to rotate this way. And the children on the right side are making the seesaw want to rotate that way. For each child, the rotational force is proportional to their mass times the distance from the fulcrum. So child A will cause a force proportional to 25 times x bar minus 1, and child B will cause a force proportional to 30 times x bar minus 3. Assuming temporarily that the fulcrum is in between child B and child C, the forces caused by the children on the left of the fulcrum need to be counteracted exactly by the forces caused by the children on the right side of the fulcrum. So these forces here need to equal 10 times 5 minus x bar plus 35 times 7 minus x bar. This equation can be rearranged as follows. Notice that I've subtracted these two terms to the other side of the equation, but instead of creating a negative sign, I've just switched the order instead of 5 minus x bar to x bar minus 5 to account for the negative sign. And similarly, x 7 minus x bar to x bar minus 7. By writing the equation in this form, we can see that the assumption in the drawing that x bar is between b and c really doesn't matter. Each of these terms has the exact same form, whether the child is on the left side or the right side of the fulcrum. To solve this equation, I'll distribute out and move my constant terms to the right side. I can factor out the x bar and divide to solve. With a little arithmetic, I get an answer of 4.1. That's how many meters from the left side I need to put my fulcrum. Notice that the numerator of my expression is equal to the sum of the masses times the distances, while the denominator is the sum of the masses. So in general, if we have n point masses located at distances x1 through xn from the left side of the seesaw, with masses m1 through mn, then to find the position x bar where we want to put the fulcrum to balance the seesaw, we can compute the sum of the mi times the xi divided by the sum of the mi. This follows from the fact that in order to get the seesaw to balance, we need the sum of the forces to be zero, and the forces are proportional to the masses times the distances from the fulcrum. Solving this equation gives us this formula for x bar. The numerator of this expression is called the moment and the denominator represents the total mass. I want to make one final comment about this problem. I've been using the x's and the x bar to represent the distance from the left end of the seesaw, so I've been putting my zero on my number line right here. But in fact, nothing of significance would change if I let my zero on my number line be like somewhere over here, and my xi's and my x bar be the distance from this point. By saying that nothing of significance would change, I mean that my derivation and my final formula wouldn't change. That's because I'd still be working with the difference in positions, whether or not the positions are calculated with respect to this point or that point. Of course, while the formula wouldn't change, the final answer will change and should change. 
if I'm calculating everything with respect to, say, this point that, say, you know, say three units over, then all my numbers would have to increase by three and my x bar should increase by three as well. If you're not convinced, then I encourage you to try it yourself. The takeaway point here is that instead of talking about distances from the left side, I could just say positions. Now let's suppose we have a thin rod lying along the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. The rod is made of a non-uniform material whose density at position x is given by a function rho of x. If we want to balance the rod, where should we put the fulcrum? Let's assume that this density is a linear density. So it's the amount of mass per unit length, in other words, something like kilograms per meter. In order to use our work from the previous problem, let's first divide our interval into a bunch of tiny little subintervals. So in typical calculus fashion, we'll assume that there are n subintervals, each of length delta x, and we'll pick a sample point, x sub i star, from each of these subintervals. So x sub i star is some point on the x-axis inside subinterval number i. So we're going to think of each subinterval as approximately like a kid on the seesaw in the previous problem. Then we can use the formula from the previous problem. x bar is going to be the moment over the total mass, which was given in the previous problem as the sum of the mi's times the xi's over the sum of the mi's, where mi represents the mass here of a subinterval and xi is position. Now the position of each subinterval is approximately equal to its sample point value. So I can write my position as xi star. And in order to figure out mi, I can just take the density times the length, and so that's going to be approximately rho at my sample point times delta x. Substituting this expression into my formula for x bar, I get the following. So x bar is approximately equal to the quotient of these two Riemann sums. And to get the exact value of x bar, I need to take the limit of the Riemann sums as the number of intervals goes to infinity. Well, the limit of a Riemann sum is an integral, so x bar is going to be the integral of rho of x times x dx divided by the integral of rho of x dx. These integrals are evaluated from the left endpoint to the right endpoint. Once again, this top expression is called the moment, and the bottom expression represents the total mass. Finally, let's suppose we have a lamina or a thin sheet in the shape of a region D. The density of the lamina at a point xy is given by the function rho of xy, which we're going to assume is in units of mass per unit area, for example, something like kilograms per meter squared. As before, we want to figure out where to put the fulcrum. In this case, the fulcrum will have two coordinates, x bar and y bar. For starters, let's assume our region is in the shape of a rectangle. And let's divide it up into tiny little subrectangles. Using subintervals from i equals 1 to m, in the x direction and from j equals 1 to n in the y direction. Let's also pick sample points xi star for the subintervals in the x direction and yj star for subintervals in the y direction. So a typical sample point in one of these subrectangles would have the form xi star yj star. Focusing first on the x direction and x bar, it seems plausible we could use the same kid on the seesaw analogy where each subrectangle functions as a kid and we're just interested in the horizontal distance between that subrectangle and x bar. So x bar should equal the sum of the masses of each subrectangle times the horizontal position of the subrectangle divided by the sum of the masses. Writing this in notation, that would be the sum over all subrectangles, so i equals 1 to m, j equals 1 to n. The mass of subrectangle is given by approximately, given by its density at its sample point, 
times the area, and then its horizontal position is just given by its sample point in the x direction. Let's divide that by the sum of the masses, which is given by the density at the sample points times delta A. Taking the limit of these Riemann sums as the number of subintervals goes to infinity gives x bar as an integral. The integral needs to be taken over the region D. An analogous expression can be given for y bar. And although the argument was given for a rectangular region, the same formulas work for any shape of the region. The numerator in this expression is called the moment about the y-axis and is written as m sub y, while the denominator once again represents the total mass, which I'll call capital M. Similarly, the numerator in this expression is called the moment about the x-axis and is written m sub x. So you may see the formulas in the textbook, x bar is equal to m sub y over m, and y bar is equal to m sub x over m. The way I remember that x bar, the x position, is written in terms of m sub y, the moment about the y axis, is that x bar is the horizontal position of the fulcrum to avoid rotation around the y axis, where y bar is the vertical position of the fulcrum to avoid rotation about the x axis. The point x bar y bar is called the center of mass. Finally, let's use the formulas we just derived to set up equations to find the mass and center of mass of the region enclosed by the curves x equals y squared and x equals 4 if density is given by rho of xy equals x plus y squared. I'll call this region D, and I'll write down the coordinates of these two intersection points, so that's when x equals 4 and y equals 2, or negative 2. Now the mass is going to be given as the integral of the density. So if we integrate first in the x direction and then in the y direction, we can write this as, let's see, in the x direction, we're going to be integrating from x equals y squared to x equals 4, and in the y direction we're integrating from y equals negative 2 to 2. Since we're just interested in setup, I won't carry out the integration, but in case you're curious, it works out to 5, 12 over 15. The center of mass means the coordinates x bar and y bar. We know that x bar is equal to the moment about the y axis divided by the mass, and y bar is the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass. To find the moment about the y-axis, we need to integrate the density times x. And to find the moment about the x-axis, we integrate the density times y. The rest of the setup is very similar to the setup for the mass computation. We can integrate first in the x-direction and then in the y-direction using the same bounds of integration and carry out the similar process for setting up the moment in the x direction. In case you're curious, m sub y works out to 2048 over 21, and m sub x works out to zero. So x bar works out to 2048 over 21 divided by 512 over 15, which simplifies to 20 over seven, whereas y bar is 0 over 512 over 15, which is 0. It's plausible that y bar should be 0 because y bar represents the vertical position that we would need to place the fulcrum to balance this region. And since the, both the region and the density function are symmetric with respect to the x-axis, we'd want to put the fulcrum somewhere on the x-axis. The value of x bar of 20 sevenths is also plausible since 20 sevenths is about 3, so that puts the horizontal position of the fulcrum about here and the center of mass around this point. In this video, we use the analogy of a seesaw to figure out the center of mass of a thin rod and of a thin lamina.